NASA has announced that Voyager 1 has awoken from its slumber and made a terrifying discovery in deep space. The probe has been charting a course through the unknown for the last 45 years, collecting invaluable data along the way. In today's video, let's take a look at this disturbing message and what it means for the probe's future. Could it be that the probe's age is finally catching up to it, or is it something far more menacing? A clear Monday afternoon on the 5th of September 1977 marks the day NASA would launch one half of one of the most successful missions in the agency's long and storied history. On that day, no one could have imagined that Voyager would become the longest-running space program of all time. The Voyager space probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, a type of nuclear battery. This is a type of battery that is perfect for missions needing energy over a long period of time, which would be too long for fuel cells or batteries, and that can't rely on solar energy. It allows us to organize very long missions to happen. As such, it's predicted that the batteries will no longer be functional from 2032 on, about 55 years after the launch of the space probes, which is quite remarkable. However, as time passed by, Various functions and systems of the probes had to be switched off to keep the main system in working order. Consequently, they'll be able to keep their current set of scientific instruments on until 2025. After decades of setting the gold standard for space exploration, it seems like time may finally be catching up with the trailblazing craft. NASA has received several terrifying messages from Voyager 1, which has left engineers scrambling for answers. Due to the probe's extreme distance from Earth, it now takes well over 20 hours for data to reach back home, which means it takes roughly two days to send a message to Voyager 1 and get a response. In a shocking discovery, the latest readings from the probe suggest that it may be going off course. This has led many to ask, what could the cause of this interference be? Could the probe be interacting with an unknown force, or could its instruments be finally succumbing to the hazardous environment that surrounds the craft? Upon looking into the issue, NASA found that Voyager 1 is operating normally, receiving and executing commands from Earth along with gathering and returning science data. But readouts from the probe's attitude, articulation, and control system don't reflect what's actually happening on board. The AACS controls the spacecraft's orientation and, among other tasks, it keeps Voyager 1's high-gain antenna pointed precisely at Earth, enabling it to send data home. All signs suggest the AACS is still working, but the telemetry data it's returning is invalid. For instance, the data may appear to be randomly generated or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in. The issue hasn't triggered any onboard fault protection systems which are designed to put the spacecraft into safe mode, a state where only essential operations are carried out, giving engineers time to diagnose an issue. Voyager 1 signal hasn't weakened either, which suggests the high-gain antenna remains in its prescribed orientation with Earth. The team will continue to monitor the signal closely as they continue to determine whether the invalid data is coming directly from the AACS or another system involved in producing and sending telemetry data. Until the nature of the issue is better understood, the team cannot anticipate whether this might affect how long the spacecraft can collect and transmit science data. Scientists are hard at work trying to explain this new mystery and believe that the data may be a result of the craft deteriorating due to age. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. They are also in interstellar space, which is a high-radiation environment that no spacecraft has flown in before. While this is a big challenge for the team, the scientists believe that if a solution to the AACS issue exists, they'll find it. Another possibility is that the team may not find the source of the anomaly and will instead adapt to it. If they do find the source, they may be able to solve the issue through software changes or potentially by using one of the spacecraft's redundant hardware systems. After all, it wouldn't be the first time the Voyager team has relied on backup hardware. In 2017, Voyager 1's primary thrusters showed signs of degradation, so engineers switched to another set of thrusters that had originally been used during the spacecraft's planetary encounters. Those thrusters worked, despite having been unused for 37 years. The Voyager probes were initially conceived as part of the Mariner program, whose purpose was to launch various robotic interplanetary probes from 1962 to 1973 to investigate Mars, Venus, and Mercury. But as their mission has been changed to go study Jupiter and Saturn, they were removed from the Mariner program. At first, they kept their original name and were called the Mariner-Jupiter-Saturn space probes. 
However, due to their evolution from the Mariner space probes, their name was quickly changed to Voyager. This new program took over many elements of the Grand Tour program. As indicated by this name, the Grand Tour program, developed by NASA, aimed to send two groups of robotic probes to all the planets part of the outer solar system – Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. Yet this program was deemed too expensive – around $1 billion. Consequently, it was canceled and replaced with the Voyager program. For this reason, the Grand Tour program had a major influence on the Voyager program, as it fulfilled a lot of the planned objectives for the Grand Tour, except for a visit to Pluto. The Voyager program used the favorable alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, which occurs only once every 175 years and was set to happen in the late 1970s. The space probes used gravitational assist, namely the use of the relative movements and gravity of a planet or other astronomical object to alter the path and speed of a spacecraft and thus saving propellant and reducing expense. Through gravity assistance, it's possible to either accelerate a spacecraft, decrease its speed, or redirect its path. While Voyager 2 was launched first on August 20, 1977, Voyager 1 was launched on September 5, 1977 on a faster and shorter trajectory. Originally, the Voyager space probes were to conduct close-up studies of Jupiter and Saturn and their larger moons. As this mission was a real success, and as the probes were in good condition, scientists decided to go and explore Uranus and Neptune. The Voyager space probes made it possible to recover a lot of data and photographs of the most distant planets, thus allowing scientists to have precise details, which were until then still unknown, about the four giant planets and their moon. For instance, we were able to observe Jupiter's cloud forms and its wind and storm systems, as well as to discover the volcanic activity on its moon Io. It was the first time that active volcanoes had been seen on another body in the solar system. It was also discovered that 7% of the upper atmosphere of Saturn is helium, and the rest is hydrogen. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, was also studied in depth. Among the major discoveries was the discovery of a magnetic field around Uranus and ten of its moons, but also the discovery of three rings and six unknown moons of Neptune. Furthermore, Voyager 1 and 2 sent us a lot of close-up photos of the giant planets. Among them is the pale blue dot, taken in 1990 by Voyager 1. This famous photograph pictures planet Earth from a distance of about 6 billion kilometers. Planet Earth appears as a very small blue dot, lost in the vastness and greatness of space. As the main mission of the Voyager program was achieved in 1989, when Voyager 2 flew by Neptune, it was decided to extend their mission through the Voyager Interstellar mission. The goal was to extend the exploration of the solar system beyond the outer planets and, if possible, beyond the limits of the solar system, beyond what we call the heliopause boundary. It can be defined as the limit where the solar wind from the sun is stopped by the interstellar medium. Reaching after the heliopause will allow the space probes to make measurements of the interstellar fields, particles, and waves that are unaffected by the solar wind and thus providing scientists with invaluable data. After 35 long years of making discoveries and carefully treading past the meteor fields that litter the solar system, Voyager 1 left the heliosphere and entered interstellar space in August of 2012. However, NASA would not be aware of this achievement until 2013, when a powerful solar eruption was recorded by the probe's plasma wave instrument. The massive eruption caused electrons near Voyager 1 to vibrate, allowing the probe to study the resulting oscillations and determine that its surroundings had a higher density than what was found inside the heliosphere. It seems contradictory that electron density is higher in interstellar space than it is in the Sun's neighborhood, but researchers explain that at the edge of the heliosphere, the electron density is dramatically low compared with locations near Earth. Researchers then backtrack through Voyager 1's data and nail down the official date of departure from the heliosphere to August 25, 2012. The date was fixed not only by the electron oscillations, but also by the spacecraft's measurements of charged solar particles. On that fateful day, which was the same day that Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong died, the probe saw a 1,000-fold drop in these particles and a 9% increase in galactic cosmic rays that come from outside the solar system. At that point, Voyager 1 was 11.25 billion miles from the Sun. Since flying into interstellar space, Voyager 1 has sent back a variety of valuable information about conditions in this zone of the universe. 
Its discoveries include showing that cosmic radiation out there is very intense and demonstrating how charged particles from the Sun interact with those emitted by other stars. Despite its age and extreme environment, the capabilities of the probe continue to astound engineers at NASA. However, some measures have been taken to extend Voyager 1's life. This includes turning off the craft's cameras to help manage the limited onboard power supply. Over the years, the mission team has turned off several other scientific instruments which include the spectrometer, plasma wave antenna, infrared radiometer, and the interferometer. This has left the probe with only four functioning instruments that are crucial to the mission. These are the high-gain antenna, low-energy charged particle instrument, hydrazine thrusters, and the radioisotope thermoelectric generator. As of today, the probes continue to send important data back to Earth. Currently, they mainly study ultraviolet sources among the stars, and they explore the boundary between the Sun's influence and interstellar space. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's new artificial gravity starship. Do you think the Voyager program should be retired? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.